Before I start, I'd just like to say that I'm recovering from my cold, but it hasn't left my throat in the best position, so I may sound a bit odd in this video once again. Art should not be purely subjective. It should have an objective standard in order to keep it in check. Without an objective standard, we will simply devolve into colours and noises and be expected to believe that it is art. Now to clarify when I say objective, because the internet seems to believe that objective means inarguable, I mean objective in the sense that you are removing any personal bias and have had it in a measurable standard that you can use to compare and contrast with other things in a medium. Let us use a jump scare in a horror movie as an example. The subjective experience will be how much it scared you. Each individual will have a different reaction to it and will be able to describe it in a different way. There are many ways you can measure a jump scare objectively though. For example, was there a decent music cue to build up the tension? Was this a frequent occurrence throughout the movie or is this a rare jump scare? Was this a fake out or was it the actual threat? Is it in a scene where it makes sense, etc? Now people will call jump scares a cheap cop out simply because they are used frequently and therefore they are not meeting a proper objective standard. Jump scares were a victim of people putting subjectivity over objectivity. They did not think about what the ramifications of simply trying to scare someone at any cost would be and have therefore killed the tension that a jump scare can bring about. They were focused more on the immediate feelings rather than the long-term effects. This is a natural common defense that most people in the arts industry would use. They will say that it doesn't matter whether it was good or bad, simply it has to make you feel a certain way. Subjectively, people can feel whatever they want. For example, I hate Borderlands, but I love Shadow the Hedgehog. However, if we were to look at both of those games through an objective lens, it wouldn't take a smart person to figure out that Borderlands is definitely going to win that prize. When I talk about these games from a subjective standpoint, the only things I can come up with to defend Shadow the Hedgehog are, I feel nostalgic for it, and for Borderlands I can only say, I just don't enjoy the gameplay. Were those two comments useful in any way? Did they help you to understand what made one good and what made one bad? No, they didn't. If we were to take an objective approach to these games, we would have to dive in deeper and we would have to talk about things that not only I but other people could see. For example, the responsiveness of the controls, how many different weapon types there are, the enemy variants, the variants of level. By far though, the two biggest mediums that have been affected by the objectivity versus subjectivity debates are narratives in pretty much anything and art as in a drawing or a painting. Drawings and paintings have some of the most vehement defenders of, but it's supposed to make you feel a certain way. However, there are definite objective standards that you can see within art, even the most abstract forms of it. For example, the colour. Do they blend well together? The consistency. Is the consistent standard of one part of the painting used for another? If it was a painting, then how noticeable are the brush strokes? There are many different ways you can measure an abstract piece of art. Which is why we can tell the difference between an abstract artist and a child's drawing. Unless, of course, you're Jackson Pollock. Cartoons also have their own objective standard to follow. For example, to make something look younger, you draw down its proportions and make its head bigger. If you want something to look cute, you give it bigger eyes. If you want something to look ugly, you add more and more detail to something seemingly basic. Despite both of these not being realistic, there are standards that need to be followed in order to convey information easily to your audience. Going back though, we can talk more about narrative. As of late, narrative has been at the forefront of subjectivity versus objectivity, and it's thanks to Star Wars Episode Eight and the subsequent YouTube reviews that have came about because of it. 
Most notably, YouTuber Mauler made a rather lengthy analysis of them, attempting to go into them and explain objectively why he feels the movies are bad. I will leave a link in the description, and if you have a few hours of your time, I would definitely recommend listening to him. Objectively, a narrative has criteria to meet in order to be an actual story. For example, there needs to be conflict, or else it is just a sequence of events. Meeting one standard, though, does not absolve someone of having to meet the other standards. A film would need to stick to its own coherent world and logic. Character actions need to make sense and the motivation for them to go and do something also has to line up with what the audience has been told before. So, for example, halfway through a romantic comedy, your character shouldn't just suddenly decide to be a superhero and fly off to save the galaxy. The conflict of the film needs to make sense too. If there is no coherent reason for the story to happen, then it is a bad piece of storytelling. Information also needs to be clearly given to the audience. If events occur and the audience had no way of knowing why they occurred, then that is bad storytelling. Objective critiques of anything come about from asking questions. If you simply sit there and consume whatever is being put in front of you, you are not going for an objective take, but rather you are letting a subjective experience wash over you. And again, enjoying the subjective experience is fine. However, you can't exactly go and critique it if you're not asking questions about many of the things that occur. You ask the questions, and if the film provides a satisfactory answer, or if the game allows you to do X, Y, or Z, or if the piece of art is coherent enough to portray that to you, then it will be good. If it cannot answer your questions, then it is bad. Another defense that is commonly used is that the art was meant to be a certain way, and was therefore meant to be bad. I find this line of logic to be immature and, frankly, rather flawed. If something has set out to be bad, that doesn't mean you praise it when it succeeds at being bad. It has objectively failed, and set out to fail meeting an objective standard. You do not praise something for failing. You tell them that this was a bad idea and, ultimately, was pointless. Nobody will be able to derive anything from that piece of art that isn't subjective. Say, for example, I write a story where a man stabs his wife because he wants his dog to lay a golden egg. There is no logic there. I set out to make something extremely pointless and succeeded, but that doesn't mean it's good. An objective standard is there not only for others to critique us, but for us to be able to check ourselves. We have to make sure what we are doing is consistent with the standards that we have set, so that way we can keep improving and developing any form of art we come across. That's not to say that there can't be flaws, of course there can be flaws, but it's about reducing them to a minimum, about making sure that your story, your painting, your drawing, your music, your video game is as tightly packed as it can be in an objective way, where someone can remove their own personal bias from something and say that it is good, or else we'll simply have to do with flashes of light and screams being entertainment. Because how can we tell them it's bad? Oh, 